reason why that I consider myself to be a valid candidate for the United States Senate. Basically, I'm uh, a country boy from Leslie County, a little town called Pine in between Manchester and um, Hazard. I graduated from Leslie County High School and uh, College Eastern Kentucky University after graduating uh, from Eastern Kentucky. You say 10 minutes? Well, I've got to really motivate if I want to get 10. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 10 would be good. We set a lot of other, other things we've got to do. You have 15, I know I can get it all in. Uh, but uh, I graduated from the East Kentucky University, then I became a United States Treasury agent. During the time when I was a United States Treasury agent, I was on protection detail, vice president of Lauder Mundell in 1980. I was also on uh, protection detail to send to Ed Kennedy and ran for president in 1980. Uh, upon uh, spending eight years with the United States Treasury Department, I resigned to come back to Richmond because I had uh, went to school there. I knew a lot of people there, went into business for myself, been in the business for 37 years. In that business, I built it to the second highest volume store in the state of Kentucky. It's an alcohol business. It's, it's on the same scale as Party Source, if everybody here is familiar with Party Source. And I, I built that into the second highest volume store in the state of Kentucky. I was the 2017 National Retailer of the Year. My knowledge in alcohol uh, issues was so great that uh, my People who opposed me said I was uh, filing self-serving liquor bills, but the <laughs> National Association of Alcohol Regulators invited me to address them in their Denver, uh, in their uh, uh, annual meeting uh, in Denver, Colorado, and paid my way to hear what I had to say. So uh, if you can take that for what it's worth. But, uh, but uh, after, after that, um, I've been uh, the 2017 National Retailer of the Year. Um, I've, started getting involved in politics. And uh, I re really didn't intend to do that. I never considered myself to be someone who would run for public office. And uh, I never dreamed that I would stand in front of people like you and try to sell why you should vote for me. Uh, I've always been sort of an independent person who really didn't like the spotlight being on. But I'm gonna have to really, really motivate to get through this. So uh, I, my hand out to you is, my bio, my, my bio and what I believe in and what I would do if I become a United States Senator. Second to that is a complete research paper on Mitch McConnell's voting record since he's been our United States Senator. Now before I get into Mitch McConnell, I want to say this. I voted for Mitch McConnell every single time that he has ran for office with one exception, I did vote for Matt Bevin in 2014. And what I'm getting ready to say is not bashing, uh, bashing McConnell. In spite of some people trying to say that I'm bashing him, I am not. As long as you are talking about a person's voting record, you cannot be bashing him. You're only bashing him when you're telling lies and saying things that really isn't honest. <coughs> so the truth is, that before I get into that, I'm going to tell you about what I, what I believe in. I believe in faith, family, and country. I believe you should be free to worship Jesus Christ without persecution. I believe you should be free to protect the life of the unborn and express your belief that abortion is morally wrong. I believe you should be free to educate your children without government indoctrination. We all know that the Department of Education needs to be abolished. I think you should be free to protect your family from all threats without fear of being in prison for possessing a firearm. I'm a total Second Amendment guy. I believe that the Second Amendment means exactly what it says. The right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. I don't deviate from that one inch. I believe you should be free to enjoy the fruits of your labor without being taxed to death. There isn't a person in here that doesn't know that we've been absolutely taxed to death. And they're trying to put more taxes on us. I believe you should be free to obtain affordable health care without government being involved in it. I think it needs to be open to the free market, and I believe that you totally should be able to go across state lines if you want to and buy the most affordable health care that you possibly can get. And I believe the, the government has really messed up the health care industry by messing with this Obamacare and so forth. I believe that uh, you should be free to choose your representatives without them being handpicked by party elites. That's, trying, that's going on right now. I believe you should be free to express your opinions without fear or, or reprisal or censorship. 
And we all are aware of what happened in the president, President Trump, when he was running in 2016, when they were throwing eggs at, at ladies trying to get into a rally or, or beating people up on the outside of the street. I believe that is absolutely, that should not go on in America. I believe you should be free to be treated fairly and prosper in peace and safety. And that is one of the basic things that, that government stands for. It, you know, the main thing in the Constitution is that the federal government is supposed to provide for the common defense. And the state of Kentucky should be pro providing a good judicial system and a good law enforcement system to make sure that you can live and prosper in peace and safety. I believe that you should have a free to have a media, a news media that does not promote untruths through propaganda. And you're going to get ready to hear what I'd like to say about that. Now, let me speak, say this about Mr. McConnell. He is very, he's very uncomfortable in Kentucky. He only has a 33% approval rating. He has a 50% approval rating among Republicans in Kentucky. We are getting <laughs> for the same thing that happened to us with the governor's race if we do not stand up and realize what's going on. We have had thousands and thousands of Democrats that have switched from Democrat to Republican. Those people are not Mitch McConnell people. They do not like Mitch McConnell. They do, they do not vote for Mitch McConnell. They do like Donald Trump, but they do not like Mitch McConnell. I'm going to tell you two or three things that I have to prove to you in order to be a viable candidate in that Senate. I have to prove to you that Mitch McConnell being your Senate Majority Leader is not necessarily to your advantage. I also have to prove to you that this all about these conservative judges it's kind of a misnomer that we need the conservative judges, but I won't tell you why that that's disingenuous of what he's been doing to us. Now, the first thing I'll start with is him being Senate Majority Leader. Anybody in there hear of the Smith Mark Act? Anyone? 1948, we passed a law called the Smith Mark Act. That act made it illegal to use government propaganda in the American news media. It's been that way since 1948. Well, guess what? In 2012, Mitch McConnell, our United States Senator, and Harry Reid, they did the Smith Mon Modernization Bill. You know what that did? See what it did. <coughs> U.S. repeals propaganda ban spreads government-made news to America. This is where fake news come from. The repeal of the smith Mont Act by Mitch McConnell and Harry Reid. Why would he want to do that? Just think, think for yourself. Why would he want to do that? In 2017, or excuse me, 2016, the president was elected on November the 8th. 2016. In December of 2016, Mitch McConnell personally slipped, and when, and I, when I use the word slipped, it's true, slipped into the 2017 National Defense Authorization Act, House Bill 5181, which was co-sponsored by Ted Lieu, one of the biggest liberals that there is in Congress from California, and this bill was called Countering Foreign Disinformation and Propaganda Act. Look at what this did. This created a $160 million slush fund to be used by the Broadcasting Board of Governors to censor conservative content in social media. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. This is where all the blocks is coming from and all the shadow banning and blocks from our messages, the conservatives' messages. This is what happened. Now let me tell you what else he did. He, that, at that time, the Broadcasting Board of Governors who oversaw all the media in the United States, it was made up of four Republicans, four Democrats, and the Secretary of State was the ninth member of that board. Well, Mitch abolished it with this bill that he slipped through. And he abolished it and he created one director of American news media, one. And because they passed it before Donald Trump became president, Barack Obama appointed that director. Guess what, people? 
to this day, Mitch McConnell has refused to confirm the president's uh, nominee to take over the Broadcasting Board of Governors. To this day. Now, why would you do that three years into the president's term? He obviously is pretty keen on keeping Obama's news media guy. And this is where why did they continually bash our president? Ms. Young. If you could take about two more minutes, because I'd like the audience to have a chance to ask some questions. Okay. okay. We're at 10 Real fast. Uh, two things I've got to get to out to you, and that is. Uh, in, in 2014, slipped into the spending bill, uh, a change in the campaign uh, contributions law. He, uh, up at that time, he, he could donate $32,400 to, to, to a party or a committee of a party. He changed that to $324,000. That's what you call dark money. That three that 324000 that these rich people are donating, which is disenfranchising us, that should never be allowed. I can't get $324,000 donation. Mine's going to be $2,800. But Mitch McConnell can get $324,000 from these rich people all over the country. And the, uh, the last thing is let me talk about judges real quick. Judges. He acts like if he is really the savior on these conservative judges. Well, let's ask you this question. Where were the conservative, conservative judges in 2017? Where were they in 2018? Where were they in half of 2019? Where were they? Now, to go a step farther, in August, and I'm only going to use the one recess, in August, they recessed the Senate. Everybody went home for a month. And what did he do? He left the person in the United States Senate to gavel in, in every day, and gavel out every night, so that the president could not do recess appointments. Mitch McConnell has blocked the president from filling every one of those, those uh, conservative judges, including the, uh, all of his ambassadors and including that director of, uh, of the Broadcasting Board of Governors. Now, I have a tremendous amount of stuff that I would like to, to uh, tell you guys, but with limited time, I'll stop right there. And if you take some questions, take questions, and then I'll answer any questions. If you have questions, questions, just raise your hand. And any question that y'all want to give, I'll come out of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes ma'am. So you made a great argument <clears throat> on, on why.